英語の発音どうやったらうまくなるかなとお悩みの方はいませんか文法は完璧でも相手に自分の発音を聞き取ってもらえなかったら自信がなくなってしまうこともありますよね視聴者の皆さんに自信を持って英語を話してもらいたいので今日はベルリッツの発音エキスパートのエリさんにアドバイスを聞いてきましたエリさんはベルリッツで発音の教材やプログラムをたくさん開発してきましたまたベルリッツで2冊の本を出版しナショナルジオグラフィックと協力してレッスンに合った教材を作っていますインタビューは英語で行いますのでリスニングの練習にもなると思いますよそれでは一緒に発音のコツを学んでいきましょう Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that you specialize in pronunciation and phonics, and you've also developed a lot of Berlitz's core curriculum, which focuses on pronunciation,、mm-hmm. both working with National Geographic to adjust their books to work well for Berlitz, and also publishing your own books、mm-hmm. that we use all the time, both in Japan. And globally? Yeah, that's right. I was really excited to talk to you today because even though you focus on young learners, I think that through my experience teaching your curriculum, a lot of it is actually really applicable to adult learners. Yeah. And I think that you might have some advice to share with us. Happy to speak to you. Thank you. First question for you is why are you interested in pronunciation? Kind of a long story. So, I have two children and they're half Japanese and half Scottish. So, they learn because we live in Japan, they learned Japanese as their first language. Then they learned how to read and write in English. And my son especially found this really frustrating because in Japanese, for example, the character ha、mm. is always pronounced ha. Yeah. But if you think of h a in English, you know, it can be hat. Or hate or hole. So he found this very frustrating. So I started looking for phonics books for my own children. But I noticed that the phonics books that you can buy are really written for first language learners,、mm-hmm. for kids whose native language is English. And they really didn't work for my kids. So I wrote my own book for my own kids. And then that eventually developed into a book that we sell at Berlitz called Phonics Jump, which is one of our best selling materials for young learners. But doing the research for that book really got me interested in the academic side of language acquisition. So I went back to university and I did a second master's degree. And the focus of my thesis was pronunciation.、Mm-hmm. Because you know, you can have all this passive knowledge of English, but if you can't You know, enunciate or pronounce clearly, then people aren't going to understand you. So it's really important. I think that's a big topic in Japan too. I've noticed that there are a lot of videos online on how to pronounce with a general American accent.、Um, what's your take on content like that? I understand that in Japan there is a correct pronunciation or a standard pronunciation of Japanese, but there is z- no standard pronunciation of. Of English. There isn't a correct version of English. And as someone whose children are, are half Scottish and half Japanese, I want them to be proud of their heritage. So I'm, I'm proud that my children speak English with a Scottish accent. But they would often go to school and be told by their Japanese teacher of English that they were using the wrong、uh, pronunciation. And I couldn't understand that because. You know, we have a, a huge variety of Englishes and they're all correct. Actually, that reminds me of something you told me. I'm not sure if you remember this, but you said that you took, was it the AK, an Aiken online speaking test? I did a, it wasn't Aiken, but it was an online speaking test. Oh, it was an online English test. Yeah. And I got 100% in the writing, 100% in the reading, and 100% in the listening, and 75% in the speaking. Because. That、it was a computer based test,、yeah. so the computer didn't understand my accent. I was very angry. Yes, I do understand that pain with an Australian <laughs> accent as well. I've noticed that in my interactions with non native speakers from around the world, my Japanese friends tend to focus a little bit more on pronunciation. Are there any reasons for that? 
I think there are two reasons. Uh, one reason is confidence.、Um, because schools in Japan tend to use only general American accents, Japanese speakers have the feeling that this is the correct accent and what they're doing is wrong. So they, they really lack confidence where they're speaking. And that kind of also ties in with the second reason, which is this overemphasis on accent reduction. I noticed there are a lot of apps or A lot of YouTube videos that focus on how to reduce your natural accent and speak with an American accent. But that really is very damaging. You should have confidence in how you speak because English has a huge tolerance for vowel sounds. If you think of the word cat,、mm. now in the southern United States, they might say cat. Yeah. And with my Scottish accent, I say cat. Or a South African might say kit. Mm-hmm. That's hugely different. Yeah. But I understand all of those accents.、Yeah. So, really, the, you know, the important thing is don't focus on vowel sounds. Okay. And when you say、um, accent reduction, is、mm-hmm. that vowels, like reducing vowel sounds? Yeah, because the only difference between an American accent or an Australian accent or a British accent is how we say vowels. Everybody、mm-hmm. says consonants the same way. We all say b or、mm-hmm. d. The only difference is vowel sounds. Okay. Australians, we don't say car, we'll say car. Is that technically like a vowel sound as well? Yeah, because you're just elongating your vowel, you're not、mm. s- stopping off with an R. so... I agree.、Mm-hmm. I think that I can understand any accent and the vowel sounds don't impact my understanding. And also, it's actually, there's an uncanny va- valley feeling, or it can be a bit strange if someone pronounces vowel sounds very perfectly. For one word? Yes, but not for others. But not for other words, yeah. yeah. So, another thing that、um, a lot of Japanese speakers of English tend to struggle with is L and R, TH、mm-hmm. and S. What I would say about those is don't focus too much on consonant sounds.、Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, you want to try to improve the way that you say L as opposed to R, but generally speaking, by the context of the conversation, I can understand what you meant.、Mm-hmm. So, A little bit of practice of those sounds is fine, but don't get too worried about it because then it affects your confidence. And as、mm. we talked about before, confidence is key. Okay. Confidence is key. What else should we focus on? Actually, if you look at the latest academic research, they say that two things are the most important when it comes to being understood by other people enunciation、mm-hmm. and word stress. What's enunciation? So, enunciation means Literally, open your mouth when you speak. Okay.、Um, if you try speaking Japanese with your teeth closed, you can speak Japanese and I can understand.、Mm. But that doesn't work with English because in English we use our lips and our tongue and our teeth to make sounds. So you have to open your mouth to make those sounds clearly.、Mm. And again, this comes back to confidence because I notice a lot of students are very like, You know, they, they don't open their mouth and they look down and speak because they lack confidence.、Yeah. And that makes it difficult to understand what they're saying. So, you know, speak out and speak loud is、mm. enunciation. I noticed when I studied Japanese and I studied French in high school, a lot of us had the same problem in Australia because we're embarrassed to say word sounds that we're not used to. Yeah. So you think you'll look foolish, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you just have confidence, you can pronounce it. Yeah. Enunciation is moving the mouth. What is stress and why is that important? Okay, so stress is really key, and I don't think it,、uh, enough students pay attention to this. Let me give you an example. I had a student the other day who said, My boss contacted me, and I couldn't understand what the student meant. I was like, Your boss contacted? What does contacted mean?、Um, and what they meant was, My boss contacted me. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the vowel sounds were correct, the consonant sounds were correct, but just by putting the stress on the wrong part of the word, I Really couldn't, you know, when they when they wrote it down, it was like, oh, okay, contact it, but it just didn't make sense to me when I was listening. Yeah. So, yeah, putting the stress on the wrong part of the word makes it difficult to understand,、mm. or it can change the meaning of your sentence. For example, if I said to you, Karen didn't steal my money,、mm. what do you think about Karen? I think Karen's fine, but maybe somebody else stole your money. Yeah, but Karen's not a thief, right? No, Karen's not a thief. No. Okay. But what if I said, Karen didn't steal my money. Karen is a thief. 
but she, it's not your money. It was someone else's money. Yeah. So completely different meaning. Yeah. And I didn't change any of the words. I didn't change the pronunciation. Yeah. I just changed the stress. So a perfectly logical sentence in English would be, the personnel department refused my parking permit because it was invalid. Mm. Now, if I put a different stress in each of those words, it becomes nonsense. The personal department refused my parking permit because it was invalid. Makes no, no sense, sense. Right? And that's all 100% due to stress. Okay, stress is important. Stress is very important. For pronunciation. So when a native speaker doesn't understand what I'm saying, it may not be because my accent is wrong, but because my stress is wrong. Yes. Do you have any tips for people that are watching now on how they can improve their stress? If you're watching, uh, for example, a movie that you like or a TV show from overseas or some YouTube content that you're interested in with native speakers of English, really pay close attention to how they're moving their mouth and notice when they open their mouth wide or when you can see like their tongue, like the or la, and try to mimic that. It's like weight training. You have to... Yeah exercise the muscles in your arms if you want to build up those muscles you also need to exercise the muscles in your face if you want to have better pronunciation yes i actually heard that recently from a very famous actress she said the same thing when she won clear pronunciation it's just like doing a workout yeah. what about um an output focus thing um one of the best is singing karaoke by singing it forces you to put the stress in the correct place in order to you know, keep up with the beat and stuff. Yeah. So that's actually very, very good practice for learning the natural rhythm. And I, I think languages are like music. Mm. Yeah, I think you learn the rhythm. French has a very different rhythm to Portuguese, which has a very different rhythm to English. Yeah. You can hear that even when babies. So if you have a French baby, a Brazilian baby and a British baby, and they're not making words yet, they're babbling, mm. but they still have an accent. They're like, goo goo gaga. Yeah. You know? <laughs> really? But each one will be different. Yeah, yeah. They oh. have very strong accents from, from the minute they can make sounds because their languages have different rhythms. Mm. I know that when I listen to music, one thing that I've noticed, noticed recently is no matter how they try to fit the word into the melody or into the rhythm of the song, they never do the wrong word stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's always right. It has to be the correct word stress because otherwise it wouldn't make sense to me. No. So if you can sing all the lyrics in an English song right, you mm -hmm. can pronounce all of those words correctly, right? Yes. One thing that I've seen in your materials is you have advice on annotating mm -hmm. intonation. Can you tell us about that as well? Yeah, so you'll often see Japanese students on the train and they'll have their little word cards with English, with the English word on one side and the Japanese on the other, and maybe mm. they'll put the uh, hurigana underneath for the pronunciation. Yeah. But what is frustrating for me is just learning those words isn't so useful. You need to learn passages and you need to do the same thing with the passages. So mm. for example, you could put a single line where there's a small pause yeah. in a sentence or a double line when you need a longer pause. Mm -hmm. Or at the end of the question, the intonation goes up. So you put an up arrow or a down arrow to go down. Mm. Um, underlining, double underlining the part of the word that is stressed. This kind of annotation as an activity is really good to get your mind to be more conscious of those kind of things. That in turn will make it more natural when you go to speak English. So yeah, learning how to annotate stress is very important. So it's not only just about that one specific word, but when you're speaking in a sentence, you need to remember like where to pause, mm -hmm. where your voice goes up. And that's difficult for Japanese students because I think Japanese is a much flatter language that has even stress mm. on most things. Also, my children are often telling me that I pronounce ame wrong. Like one time it's candy, one time it's rain. And they're like, ame is candy, ame is rain. I'm like, they're the same. Like, Can't you hear it? I'm like, I don't hear the difference. I have one question for you that mm -hmm. I've experienced so many times. I will talk to somebody um, and they will say one word, like you said before, contacted. Mm -hmm. My boss contacted me and I won't understand what they're saying. And I think sometimes they will feel like they tried to get the correct pronunciation and the listener didn't understand them. Mm. And it's so disheartening. Yeah. So do you have any advice for situations like that? Because it's going to happen. It is going to happen. 
and you just have to kind of pick yourself up and keep going. Just because you make one mistake doesn't mean that everything you say is terrible. Yes. Yeah. I always tell people that the worst pronunciation is when you say nothing at all. Because if you say nothing at all, then people are 100% not going to understand what you mean. <laughs> Very true. Worst pronunciation is nothing at all. I like that. And we have that problem. Oh, occasionally. it happens to me all the time in Japan where I'll say something that I think is, you know, perfect Japanese and the person just looks at me like, I don't understand what you said. So yeah, I understand what's, where students are coming from. All right, well, those were all my questions for you about pronunciation. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And we're going to be talking soon about test skills. So if you have a test coming up, please make sure to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Kyokara,発音頑張りたいという方に宿題が2つあります。1,好きな英語の歌を選んで完璧に歌えるように 練習してみましょう。その曲を聴くときに歌詞を見ながら一緒に歌ってみてください。1ヶ月以内に完璧に歌えるようになるのが目標です。2、好きな英語の文章を1節探してみてください。有名人のツイートでも日本語の歌の